Pascal's Chocolate Works, Mitchum. This factory was a feature of Mitchum from the beginning of the 20th century up to around 1972. Here's a brief description of that period of time. The business was started by James Pascal in 1866 in a small shop off of Oxford Street in London. He had previously worked for Cadbury's. His business expanded, they moved to larger premises in Blackfriars, and in 1888 he bought part of the land that belonged to James Bridges Manor Farm in Mitcham. And for the following 10 years, the production was at Blackfriars and Mitcham, but a fire devastated the Blackfriars works in 1897, which led to the Mitcham site being the main location of production. If we have a look at this Ordnance Survey map from 1893, this is a georeference map, so I can just use the transparency overlay to show you the location. Basically, the site of the Mitchum Industrial Estate off of Stratton Road on the opposite side of the road from Uckfield Grove is the extent of the, the site of the Bascals factory. So in 1893, it's still open farmland. In 1911, we can see that there is a chocolate works marked out on the map. That's Stratton Road, there's Figs Marsh. Uckfield Grove hasn't been built yet, but it's basically here. There's the entrance to the factory. As I say, this is 1911 before World War I, and we have a photograph of workers coming out of the Pascal factory, possibly in the 1920s. And where this arch is, we can actually make out James Pascal written above it. This aerial photograph on the Historic England website was taken on 31st of July 1921. We're looking towards the southeast. In fact, over there we could see that curved road there is Eastfields Road and beyond it the Eastfields allotments. This is the railway line. On that side there is now St Mark's Academy School, originally the Eastfields High School, but well, sorry, originally Originally the Eastfield Secondary School, which became a high school. And that would be the level crossing at Eastfields, where Eastfields train station is now. This is the factory estate of Pascals. And on this side, we can see allotments as well as on this side as well. But this, this is Figs Marsh. And these allotments would have been for the food drive as a part of World War I. Growing your own food, can't import anywhere, there's war going on. Let's have a look at the factory. There's a entrance to the side there. You can make out the gate leading to, into the factory. And this corresponds to this entrance. And these gates are open in this photograph. So as I say, this was taken on the 31st of July, 1921. And if we look at a calendar website, and if we look at the calendar for 1921, July 31st was a Sunday, which is why the gates are shut. It's a Sunday. Quite an extensive building. That looks like some might be a clock there. That's probably the office workers' entrance. There's another entrance here. So by 1921 the firm was quite well established. Yeah, nice photo. Let's have a look at some adverts from this one from 1920. Pascal's Versailles for chocolates. The name implying quality in the highest degree accurately describes the contents of this dainty box of chocolates. Each separate chocolate is an exquisite production, fine in flavour, pure, distinctive, delightful. Marvellous. This advertisement refers to start collecting Pascal dog cards now. We get a free casket of sweets and chocolates. I wonder how big the casket was. I thought, think of caskets as something really big. But anyway, see cards in every packet of Pascal Ambrosia full Devonshire, full cream Devonshire milk chocolate. 
in sizes of threepence, fourpence, eightpence, and one on four. James Pascal Limited, London and Mitchell. And this one is from 1936, aimed at children. Pascal's Weekly Extra Special, number 12. So it looks like they put this ad in on a fairly regular basis. Published by James Pascal, Mitchum, sorry. And there's a competition here. Win £10 with a couplet. 10 minutes thinking may win you £10. We offer a £10 note for the best couplet, which includes the word Pascal's. So, a bit cheeky, they're asking for their children customers to come up with a slogan for them. And the one I quite like down the bottom is, it's difficult to find a thing that everybody eats. That's why the wisest fathers bring home tins of Pascal sweets. This 1952 Walnut Survey map shows the extent of the factory layout. Chocolate works. There's Uckfield Grove opposite this entrance. And that cross there indicates that that's a walkway corresponding to this walkway here underneath the building. This is a 1960 advert. James Pascal Limited, Stratham Road Mission, have vacancies in the factory for women under 45 years of age. Yes, sexism and ageism in one advert. Full time, 7.30 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. Starting wage, £6, 11 shillings and a penny. Evening, 5.45pm to 9.45pm. Starting wage, £2, 19 shillings and 10 pence. Strange number, isn't it? Why can they just add another couple of pence to it and make it £3? Substantial bonus can be earned. Excellent conditions. Canteen. 115 bus passes factory. Many others within a few minutes walk. Well, I don't remember a 115. Apply the personnel department between the hours of 9.30am and 11.30am and between 2pm and 4pm. How come they get a two and a half hour lunch break then? Anyway, moving on. This is from a 1960s brochure that's in the local studies library at Sir Morden. Again, at Stresham Road, there's our entrance. You can just see that archway which we saw in the early 1920s photo, and also from the same brochure, photos of an early Pascal van and the latest transport. I've also got a copy of a booklet called 44 Ways to Cook with Pascal Marshmallows. Who knew? So that's mellow marble cake, mellow apple tea cake, star turn, apple mince pies, Coffee sandwich cake. It comes in this packet. Basket all marshmallows. Recipe size. Sixpence. Shilling. One and six. Or two shillings. Published by the Marshmallow Bureau. James Pascal Limited. Stratton Road. Mitchum Surrey. And in 1970, Eric Montague took this photograph of the front of the factory. And here are our gates. Leading to the entrance that we've referred to a number of times. And on the left we can see a bus shelter. Was that for the 115? And he also took a photograph of this entrance with that clock above the entrance door. What a nice building. Shame it wasn't kept. So let's have a look at the local newspapers. In the Richmond of Mercury, 27th of March 1959. Beecham Group may take over local sweet firm. Two and a half million pound bid for Pascals. Shareholders advised to accept offer. Spoiler alert, they did. The giant Beecham Group, makers of Brill Cream, Lucasade, and other well known products, have made a two and a half million pound cash bid for Pascals, a local sweet firm. Assurance about future. The 1,000 employees received an official assurance about the future soon after they arrived for work on Monday. They were told there is little doubt that Pascals will stay in Mitchell. They will continue to make the same products. There may be more work for them. So life continued at the factory. 
sporting events occurred, like this one here, where the members of the Hengelo sports team from Holland visited the factory. That was in the 24th of August 1962 edition of the Mission Moves of Mercury. And the same newspaper reported that members of the Dutch table tennis team are seen here with the Pascals team who retained their trophy. Yes. All jolly stuff. That's 1962. A couple of years later, the Mission Moves of Mercury points out that in addition to two other local factories closing, Cadbury's are going to take over James Pascal. Redundancy at Pascal seems unlikely. Cadbury brothers, who have made it clear in their intention is to continue to manufacture sweets at Mitchum. That was 1964. Six years later comes the news. Pascal's to close. 1,200 will lose their jobs in the next 18 months. That was reported on March 27th, 1970. One of Mitchum's biggest factories, Pascal Murray's, is to be closed because of reorganisation plans. Over 1,200 employees coming from all over Mitchum, Stratum and beyond will be laid off. The close down of the sweets factory, which was bought by the Cabri's Schweppes confectionery group in 1964, is planned to be phased over 12 to 18 months. In announcing the decision to employees on Friday, Mr Adrian Cadbury, Managing Director of Cabri Schweppes, pointed out there was a persistent labour shortage in the Mission area and the shortage was expected to increase. Basically saying, don't worry chaps and chapesses, you'll be able to get a job straight away somewhere else. And this is from the 1972, January 21st, 1972 edition of the Mitchum Moves of Mercury. Pascal's chimney, one of Mitchum's landmarks, is disappearing. The picture shows workmen starting to demolish it as the site is cleared to make way for a new factory development. And this is from the following edition, the 28th of January 1972. Going, going, the last of Pascal's sweet factory in Stratton Road, Mitchum. The site will be developed as an industrial estate. So there you have it. For the majority, nearly three quarters of the 20th century, Mitchum had its own chocolate factory. And today the site is the Mitchum Industrial Estate. There's the Stratham Road, there's Uckfield Grove. It's amusing, there's a little gap in the bushes there, which is basically where the original entrance was, to where the workers came in that we saw in that earlier photo. And this is light industry, isn't it? Rather than actually a factory. No one's selling chocolates though. There's even a gym over there. What if they sell chocolates? Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please press that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Bye for now.